Hi and welcome back to Firestarters TV. I'm Pamela Signeri and I have two very special guests with me today. <coughs> I have Henry Keogh, who you may have heard of before, and Faye Hamble. And Henry, a lot of people in Australia do know your story, but they don't know that you are a man of God, that you have the fire of God on your life. Um, well, it's not something I've had the opportunity to um, yeah, bandy about. I know, this is the opportunity. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you, you've, you've had um, not an interesting journey, actually quite a terrifying one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and yet God has brought you through this. Yeah. Look, I was very fortunate in that I had a grounding in Christianity before I went in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't lose all hope straight off the bat and I drew on my faith and at that stage my naive, my naive faith in the system mm. to carry me through for a while yeah. and when the system let me down I had to rely wholly on, uh, no pun intended, um, <laughs> on my faith and yeah. my relationships with um, family and, and supporters mm. which you know, meant an awful lot. Of it course. stopped me from sinking. Yeah. Yeah. And in prison, you actually had an encounter with the living God. Yeah, I did. Um, that came about um, after a Kairos Inside program, which was a three-day um, course that they run inside. Mm. Fairly intense and immersive uh, mm. program. And it gave you the chance to address any questions that you had or outstanding issues. Not so much for myself because I had uh, a grounding in sure. Christianity beforehand and, mm. and because I'm an analytical type I sort of researched um, <laughs> the area anyway because if I'm going to have a holder position yeah. I like to be able to be able to state why yeah. and to back it up because mm -hmm. um, there's no shortage of people out there who hold an opinion but that's all it is, it's just an opinion, mm. they've got nothing to support it other mm -hmm. than well because that's the way I feel. Mm. Um, and I see now that I have an over-reliance on head knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, in a way, before it was a crutch. I mm. can see it was a crutch, but mm. I needed it because that was shift, all you had. I hadn't had the shift. Yeah. You know, it hadn't gone from here to mm. here mm. enough. Mm. And um, I was fortunate enough, because of that encounter, mm. that I was able to make the move from believing that there was a God Mm. to an absolute certainty yeah and that was a monumental shift absolutely mm. absolutely and a very interesting way to encounter him mm. God, God will not be the God of the Sunday night services if you mm. don't get saved in a Sunday night service you're not really saved that's mm -hmm. not true is it mm. and and it's also not true as we were saying before that you only have the fire of God on you if you're a preacher mm. you know because <clears throat> God Every single one of us as believers should have the fire of God. Well, exactly. I mean, yeah. that's what it's all about. Yeah. I heard a really great phrase once uh, by one of the chaplains who came um, visiting. And he said, you know, at every chance, preach the word of God. Mm. And if you have to, use words. Yes. And really, that's it's, all about, it's all about um, living out your faith. Yeah. I mean, you can... Yeah talk until the cows come home, mm. but if you're not going to act it out, mm. Mm. You, what they call it? it's like an empty gong, a mm. noisy gong. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because people are pretty savvy to, you know, what's real and what's false. Let's mm. bring Faye in, sure. because Faye, you didn't know Henry until he was actually, he'd been in prison for quite some time. Mm. Yes, that's, that's quite correct. I um, came across Henry's case after hearing Bob Moles, former law professor, talk about miscarriages of justice. Mm. And that actual experience of listening to that talk was, I'm sure, it had God's hand over it because mm. I had accepted to go to the talk when I heard that Henry's case had been given top billing. I said, no, not interested because <laughs> I had already decided Henry was guilty. Mm. And I actually tried to cancel on the woman who was taking me and she didn't pick up and she ended up at my door that night. Mm. And she said, why have you been trying to contact me? And I said, don't worry, um, I'll, I'll go come. to this meeting. And 
I was at the meeting and I was quite convicted by the fact that I had found in my own thoughts Henry to be mm. guilty. Mm. And that night I learned a lot about the justice system and about Henry's case in particular. Yeah. And Henry, had you had that encounter with God by the time you met Faye? Oh yes, long yeah. before. Yeah. So... I knew she was fighting odds greater than hers. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's... Yeah, I, I think it's really romantic, um, but <laughs> in a perverse sort of way. But, um, but God had his hand on you guys, mm. you know? He really did, but because there was no way you would have ever met Henry. No. no. And there's no way I would have said yes. But, mm. but, but the fact is, I didn't want to meet Henry. No, no I know. <laughs> because why would I want to meet a murderer? <laughs> yes, well, yes. I mean, I know some people find that interesting and quite, you know, quite attractive, but... It wasn't in, you know... It, it wasn't, wasn't in, on your bucket no, list. No, it wasn't on my bucket list at no. all. No, <clears throat> And God had other plans. Absolutely, absolutely. And obviously when you met him, you, you saw that, that, that God in the man, not just the man, well, because you had an instant connection. We did, but it was a friendship. And mm. Yes, yes. It was a delightful yes. thing, you know, now I'm married to this man. Yeah. But when I first met, I, you know, I, I can say quite openly and honestly that I had no intention. I was not looking no. for a romantic involvement. And Henry swears, and I believe him, neither was he. Mm. So well, you weren't in a position to follow <laughs> no, no. He, he didn't have a lot to offer. <laughs> I, no, my prospects weren't uh, all that shiny. <laughs> and there was no way known I was going to encumber a potential partner with what I saw as um, um, a protracted wait, and mm. a wait that might not have a, you know, uh, a favourable resolution. Exactly. And I wasn't going to do that. No, I mean, some people have baggage, but you had a freight train. A bit. So, yeah. Yeah, mm. so, yeah. And so it's an understandable thing, but mm. I, I just think it's awesome how, how God had a plan. And well, I think you know, we had the ideal basis mm. um, because we started as friends. Yes, friends. exactly, mm. exactly. And if you want your marriage to last, it's best to start as friends, isn't it? Yeah. Well, there were no secrets. There's no fronts put on. No, no. Mm. Well, you had no secrets anyway, pretty much. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> it was right out there. Girls got to have some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, in terms of, um, you know, the, the way God moved, I'll let you think about this because we're going to go to a commercial break. You know, how, how has that changed the way you see your life moving forward? And we're going to come right back and you can answer mm. that one. Welcome back. Now, Henry, I posed a question to you. You've had a minute to think about it. Yep. <laughs> so what okay. say you? Prior to going to jail, my number one aspiration had always been to do medicine. OK. There's a strong vein in me to want to you know, heal people or to help them, yeah. um, and ideally to help them heal themselves. Mm, mm. Um, and while I was in jail, I often found plenty of opportunities to help people in their situations. Mm -hmm. um, there's a saying, I mean, you can, teach, you can give a man fish or you can teach him how to. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I thought it far better if I could empower them yeah. mm -hmm. and show them techniques and strategies mm -hmm. to deal with whatever it was that they were facing. Mm -hmm. and then they could move forward because I can't carry their, no, you know, exactly. hold their hand yep. through the rest of even their sentence, let alone their mm. life. Mm. And then hopefully they can go on and influence others as well. Yeah. And it was also a situation where because I was able to look into their situation, mm -hmm. it helped me take my focus off my uh, predicament, mm. because there was some. Well, I mean, a lot of the time you're in jail, you have no control, no, no say over um, even your day-to-day -day life, let alone mm. circumstances that are happening outside of the prison. Mm. Um, when it came to legal um, petitions yeah. and appeals, and so to take my mind off that, mm. I would look at whatever it was the other guys were struggling with, and if I could help them, it was a, it was a win-win. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And, the, I mean, that's the lesson of Job, isn't it? Yeah. As soon as Job stopped 
saying, poor me, poor me, mm. and, and started to pray for his friends. You know, his entire life changed and everything was restored to him. Yeah, yeah. So you've got lots of good things to look forward to. Mm, yeah. Lots of good uh, things. One of the things I want to do is to use or to draw on the experiences mm. and the lessons and the insights mm. that I've gained in, in, in that time and use them to help others realise that no matter what your circumstances, mm. you don't have to necessarily despair and give up. No. Um, the one thing I'm 100% convinced of is that um, there are plenty of situations in, in people's lives mm. that are every bit as much a life sentence as one imposed by a court. Yes, yes. And they're living with that day in, day out mm. with no time off for good behaviour. Mm -hmm. you know, they're stuck mm -hmm. in a body that has stopped working yep. or is racked with pain. Yep. Or they're in a, um, a loveless or an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you get out of that? You can't, you're stuck with it unless, unless you know, you. a miracle. Mm. And so it's so easy in that situation to lose hope yeah. and to give up. And it doesn't have to be that way. No, and that's a great message mm. that you can bring. Yeah. But you guys are also very fired up about justice mm. and, you know, having been wrongfully convicted, you know, it's, it's, it's a very close to your heart passion, mm. isn't it? Sometimes I, I, I struggle with focusing in on my own stuff. Sure. And what I do is I'm impacted more by the struggles and the pain that I see in others. Mm. Mm. Because I've been blessed, if you like, with um, a good education, yeah. good examples um, mm. in, in my parents. Mm. I mean, my father was the best role model I could have had. Mm. I never heard him complain one day in his life, mm -hmm. no matter what mm -hmm. was thrown at him. You know, he would just dust himself off, get up and move on. Mm. And I thought, with that example, that's what you did. I don't believe in holding a pity party. No. Um, no one wants to come. Um, That's right. <laughs> and they cost too much. Uh, but, when I, and therefore, because I'm lucky because I don't focus in mm. on myself and maintain as much as I can mm. perspective. And I know that there's always someone else worse off than myself. Yeah. Yep. Um, if not because of their circumstances, mm. because of their inability to deal with it mm. in a healthy way. Mm. And what I want to do is, if I can, reach out to those people mm. and help them overcome yeah. what it is they're dealing with. Yeah. Pab, could I say something in sure. support of Henry not focusing on himself? Mm. When he was in jail and, and I became involved in his, in his matter, I, I became involved with various prayer groups yeah. and I was aware of others that were taking place and mm. there were many people who were praying for Henry's release. Mm. When, when faced with at the time, a reality of it's not going to happen. Yeah. But nonetheless, people did not give up on prayer. Mm. And since Henry's been released, which is now just over two years, mm -hmm. from time to time we meet strangers who become aware of Henry's um, presence and they'll come up to him and say, hello, I'm so-and-so, mm -hmm. I've been praying for you. Mm -hmm. And it's incredibly moving because yeah. They are absolute people who, you know, of course, Christians and people who care about others, but mm. had no connection with him whatsoever. Mm. And when I actually spoke to Henry while I was visiting him and getting to know him, and one day, when it was some time after we'd met each other, I asked about him praying for himself. I said, you know, what, what are the prayers like that you're praying mm. for yourself? And he said, I don't pray for myself. <laughs> and I was... I was utterly shocked yeah. because I assumed we'd, you know, he'd be pleading and trying to do mm -hmm. bargains at least. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Going into the courts of heaven and yeah. getting this thing but straight. He, he said, I prayed for my family. I prayed that yeah. they would be fine. I prayed for their health. I prayed mm. for their well-being. Mm. And mm. he said, not once have I prayed for myself. And I was speechless. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, I can imagine that mm. because that's what I, exactly what I would have thought that mm. anyone in your position would be doing. But 
Well, I think sometimes my star sign is salmon. You know, I just go against the stream. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Yeah. If everyone's going that way, I want to go that way. Yeah. But, but I, I think also as Christians, that's actually what we're called to do. I think so. Mm. You know, I, it's too easy to be a sheep. Of course. I mean, I know we, we, you know, in the Bible we're called sheep over and over and over again, but, you know... It's only a metaphor, it doesn't have to take it, it literally. It is, it mm. is. And, you know, I, and I just think that, no, we should be swimming against the stream, not accepting mm. the status mm. quo. Yeah. We're going to take another break because I'm getting the signal and we're going to come back and talk some more about you two. OK. Welcome back. And we're here with Henry and Faye and we're talking about all sorts of things. But specifically, you know, how how God transformed your lives as a couple, but, but particularly, Henry, when you were in prison and you were in that place of, for most people, no hope, what, what's the spiritual atmosphere like <clears throat> in there for others? It, uh, look, it, it's really mixed. Yeah. You, often this myth is perpetuated that uh, they all find God in jail, right? Well, I mean, two things I'd say that. One is just an expression which is not that accurate to start with. Mm. Um, and the other thing too would be, where else would they find him when there's no other distractions from all everyday life? Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's what a lot better easier, place? isn't it? <laughs> you know, and just look where Jesus walked. Who did yeah. he go out and mix with? <laughs> Absolutely. Thieves, prostitutes, Why is beggars. it a surprise? Well, I mean, really, it's, um, it shouldn't be such no. an issue, but people like little cliches to yeah. hang on to and yeah. beat people with. But the atmosphere itself is very, very mixed. Yeah. You'll find a small percentage of people have got, I mean, a real Christian background. Mm -hmm. I don't mean just nominally a Christian. Yep. They went yep. to church and all that sort of stuff before mm. they went to prison. Okay. You've got some who in the other group were nominally, and that's probably the majority. Mm. And then there's another sizable uh, number mm. who have got no exposure to Christianity at all. Mm. They don't know what who Jesus was mm. or God mm. other mm. than as a profanity. Yeah. That's their only... They say, Who's this Jesus bloke? Mm. Mm. and they were being serious. Mm. Um, and then when you sort of, it becomes obvious that you are a Christian because you either go to services or you're going to um, talk with the, uh, the chaplains or you're mm. having communion or whatever it is. Mm. Oh, you're a Christian, are you? So there's a, Again, a, like a profanity. <laughs> uh, or probably the worst. Yeah. Um, but sometimes... You know, a lot of people are intimidated by that and then they'll just shrink away and not yes, go anymore. Yes, yes. You know, again, the salmon in me maybe says, well, maybe it's not the way it comes across. Mm. Maybe it's their, just their way of testing you, yeah. either to see how you handle it, because jail mm. is just so boring. Sometimes you need to create your own entertainment. Um, and other times it might be their clumsy way of asking the question. Yeah. So I say, yeah. well, actually I am. What would you like to know? Mm. Mm. Most will say, oh, nothing, I was just checking. And yeah. they'll, they'll shrink away. <laughs> yeah. um, but every now and again, that will open up a line of discussion yeah. that you would never have taken place no, had you not come not. back that way. Of course not. And particularly in an environment like jail, where you have so little, mm. I'm not just talking about materially, mm. but in terms of hope or activities or mm. anything to mm. ground yourself with, mm. Um, and a lot of people come in with you know, horrendous backstories. Oh, I bet. And they need something. Mm. Mm. And one of the things I found with particularly like the Kairos and the Alpha, Alpha courses, mm. people found comfort or um, a degree of reassurance and something that they could anchor themselves with yeah. that mm. was absent in their life before. Mm. And you know, for them, it was like coming home. Um, and that's powerful. Mm. That, you know, uh, just going back to your original comment, you know, about what people say, oh, of course they always find God in prison. Mm. It, that's almost an insult. 
isn't it? It's sort of like, oh, well, that's not real. That won't stick mm. because they found God in, in yeah, exactly. prison. Yeah. And I mean, what a nonsense because we, Isaiah 61 says, you know, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to mm. preach good news, exactly. yeah. to preach liberty to the captives, you know, and we, do we think that doesn't apply today? Mm. Some I mean, do. Mm. Jesus lived his <coughs> life like that, mm. preaching the good news, speaking liberty mm. and freedom and healing to the sick. Mm. And, you know, we're good with healing, but we're not so good with really getting to the core problems. Exactly. Band-aid measures. Yeah. Mm. You know, oh, mm. oh, bless you. You know, yeah, don't yeah. bother me, but just bless you and, yeah. and I'll be off. But if, if we, the church, took up just a little bit of what you've experienced, mm. imagine how people's lives could be changed. Mm. There wouldn't be the re-offence. There, there would, there, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Mm. Everything would be different, surely. Pe the, the, the kids yeah. of those people that are in there. Yeah. Well, a lot of the guys, and I, I imagine women too, are in there because they've either had no um, parental, good, mm. uh, positive parental models mm. or only bad ones. Yeah. And again, yeah. And I won't go into details, but some of the backstories mm. demonstrate that mm. profoundly. Mm. And if you have no baseline to draw from, how do you conduct yourself going forward? Mm. Um, you either just follow what you see everyone else doing mm. or it's just dog eat dog, yeah? mm. survival of the fittest. And that's how a lot of them operate because it's all they know. Yeah. And sometimes it, it comes out of fear yeah. and sometimes it just comes out of you know, bad modelling yeah, exactly. or necessity to survive. Well, well yeah, and, and that's mm. a pretty primal instinct, isn't yeah. it? I will survive regardless. So Faye, you are a very accomplished woman in your own right. So you're, you're just not carrying Henry's handbag. And um, yeah, I saw that before. <laughs> um, so uh, moving, moving forward, your, your life as it's laid out, you know, wh wh where do you guys see God opening up? opportunities for you? Well, isn't that a big question? Yeah, I like big questions. Oh, could you give us the answer, please? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, that's a fascinating part of our new relationship because I had thought that my career was done and dusted and that basically I would just live a quiet life mm. um, on the river two grandchildren that I would do the things that a woman of my age would do. But Henry has had a big chunk of his life removed um, from him yeah. and he has actually had come out now with a, it took a while, but he's now got a renewed enthusiasm and a new renewed desire to do something meaningful. Yeah. And so I'm now um, part of that, uh, happily, I'm part mm. of that. Mm. But it's, we're trying to map out Henry's future, which of course is our future, yeah. and and I'm really thrilled that Henry's now going to use his experience experiences of jail to the positive and yeah. to to support yeah. people, and and I think that's thrilling. It is. It's it's. Th but there's a great sense of unknown as well. Mm. So we're just sort of trusting and having faith that yeah, by faith. Yeah, by faith. By faith. It's been so good talking to you guys. Because I, I love you and I just really, I'm so thrilled that, that our paths have crossed. Mm. Right, so, right. you know, we'll see you soon. And I'm still Pamela Signeri. This is still Firestarters TV and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to like us on Facebook because then you can access our exclusive Facebook only interviews. These are excerpts from much larger interviews, some you've seen on television, but these are the bits you didn't see. And so don't miss out, like us on Facebook today.